What's up guys, Tenzin here with another video and as always, it's so glad to see your amazing and beautiful faces. It's been a while. It's been a while. How many? Two weeks? Yeah, two weeks, but I've been working hard on my Jab Jab JavaScript course. So yeah, if you're interested in that course, I've, you know, go to Jab Jab JavaScript and join the waitlist. But today I'm going to talk about the top Atom packages that I have used in the past. And I'm using past tense because I've moved away from Atom and now I do VS Code. I do have to say I love VS Code and I don't think I'm gonna go back to Atom. It's sad, but Atom is really good, okay? It's, I'm not saying you should switch. And in this video, I'm not going to talk about all the packages, okay? If I have to talk about all the packages, packages I have about like 40 to 50 packages like probably like 40 packages that's gonna take a long time and uh, yeah I don't want to do that so these are like my top main packages that I've used in the past so yeah without further ado let's get into it All right, so the first package is called Vim Mode Plus. So Vim Mode Plus is based on Vim. Vim is a text editor, just like Sublime, just like um, Atom, right? It's just a text editor. However, it's not like any other text editor like Sublime or any of that, right? With Vim, you can do pretty magical stuff. So for example, okay, if you want to delete a line, what do you do usually? You hold your mouse, right? And you... Like go to the end of the line and then highlight it and then delete it, right? Or if you know shortcuts, you just do command right key to go to the end and then command backspace to delete the whole thing, right? If you know the shortcuts, that is. But with Vim, once you learn it, what do you do? To delete a line, just do DD. You want to copy a line, YY. You want to paste a line, P. You want to repeat that process again and again, just do dot, 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 done. If you want to go to a line, just do GG9. If you want to go to line nine, if you want to go to line 100, GG100. If you want to go to the end of the line, shift A. If you want to go to the beginning of the line, shift I. You want to go jump from word to word, www if you want to go from uh, like go back from like reverse word to word b b b b right if you want to let's say go to the top of the file gg if you want to go to the bottom of the file uh like to the very bottom uh sh shift g like capital g right and let's say you want to edit a word that your cursor is currently selected on okay what do you do ciw and just start typing okay and that's just a tip of the iceberg like with vim even to this day i'm learning new stuff every single day okay there's just way too many things like the it's so amazing, okay? And you don't need to know everything to get started. Just start. And another reason why I love it so much is because it's universal. Like Vim, you can write it anywhere, okay? So for example, if you just open up any terminal, you can just do Vim, um, like some random file.txt or just open any file and start like editing that file with Vim and with all the shortcuts, okay? And with all the capabilities of Vim, okay? And I, I like... I can't do a 10 hour video and talk about all the stuff Vim has, okay? That, that's how many features it has. There's, just, just, there's so many things. So, so the bottom line is learn Vim because it's gonna save you a ton of time down the line. Um, and as developers, right, as programmers, you're gonna be writing a lot of text. Like you're gonna be writing a lot of text like million times. So if you're gonna be doing something again and again, like million times, doesn't it make sense to like, learn how to do that efficiently whatever that thing is so when you learn vim like going through text and that's why you guys comment right you guys are like i don't i don't get how fast you move through the text and that's how i do it with vim okay it took a lot of time in the beginning it took you know my productivity level just went down like crazy just down the dumpster when i started learning vim i was just like what is this it's, it's just it's just so silly what jk to move up and down h l to like go left and right it doesn't make sense but you start learning it you start learning it you start learning it you start using it and then soon you realize holy crap i am so fast so yeah learn vim you'll thank me second package is emmet okay so emmet is a way to write html okay if you're doing templating engine like pug whatever it is right so you're writing html regardless as developers or web developers specifically so um if you're writing something again a lot isn't doesn't it make sense to like know how to write it efficiently right so with emmet you can like it's you have a lot of shortcuts that you can do to write 
HTML really quickly. So again, let me give you an example. So if you want to write a UL tag, unordered list with 10 list items, 10 ally tags, with each ally having a class of item and fruit, two classes, what do you do? So usually you just type it and then you type it again. Maybe you copy it a bunch of times, paste it, paste it, paste it. So it's very time consuming. With Emmet, what you can do is just do UL bracket, angle bracket, li dot item dot fruit times 10, done. That's it. You have Now you have 10 list items inside of that and each of those list items will have a class of item and fruit, okay? So it's that easy. And again, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can do so many cool things with Emmet. And again, I don't know everything about Emmet, okay? I probably use less than 5% of Emmet and that's because you know I looked at it and I'm like okay this is useful a lot of these are like complicated and that doesn't make sense you know if you have to think about like your shortcuts and doing that then it defeats the purpose of it right uh, same thing with Vim I don't know everything about Vim but I just use the most common things that resonate with me that I find it useful and I just use them again and again okay um, so with Emmet you got to do the same thing um so yeah learn Emmet it's gonna save you a lot of time third package is called Platformio IDE terminal so with Padam by default there isn't a built-in terminal so with this package I have a built-in terminal inside of Atom and also I've added a shortcut in Atom to like quickly change between um, the terminal and the text editor so like I do command and colon okay I'm command and semicolon and when I do that hit it again and again it like switches between it toggles the terminal okay and uh, I'm probably gonna link that below in the description below okay so you basically change uh, add two lines inside of um, like key map .cson file okay and uh, you, you get there by doing clicking on Adam and then clicking key maps okay that's it number four merge conflicts so this is one of those annoying things when you're working with git right and if you've been coding for any longer than a month you probably have used git okay if you haven't you probably should um, and you know when you when you have git and you're working with github with multiple people you will have this something called merge conflict okay and when you have that especially in the beginning it's so frustrating you don't know what to do there's so many commands that you have to memorize and you're it's just like a nightmare right but with this tool it makes that process a little bit easier because it shows you colors and it tells you what 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 your current file is and what's the remote file is uh, like what changes are and it just tells you what to like do okay with colors and stuff it makes your life a little bit easier and that's it number five Atom Beautify. This is one of my favorite packages. So with this, you can pretty much format, uh, basically fix the indentations and stuff like that. Format any like language, like Python, JavaScript, even JSON files, whatever it is, you can like quickly fix it with a shortcut. So uh, I don't know the exact shortcut is, but what I do is usually, I don't like memorize every shortcut. So what I do is I just do command shift P, which opens the command palette, like the main command. I don't know what you call that, but basically you can run commands, any commands from there. Okay. So I just do um, beautify. I just type in like B E A U and automatically highlights that. And I just hit enter. And that's it. Okay. So it's amazing. Number six is linter. So uh, I use ESLint um, so for JavaScript, and then sometimes I use CSS lint. And what what linter does is it gives you, it shows you like errors while while you're doing things. Like if you miss a semicolon or you miss a bracket or whatever, right? It shows you right away where it's at. It'll explain the problem to you. So then you you don't have to do the like debugging yourself a lot of it is taken care of by that so then you just go oh yeah i get that i get that you're just missing a semicolon there um a bracket here uh you know curly brace there and so on and so forth and it, it, it can do even more things but that's just the tip of the iceberg number seven is pigments okay so pigments is a color package so basically i use, i do a lot of sass and i have a lot of colors right variables um hsl rgb hex code so basically this recognizes all those different like color codes and uh, highlights it 
with that specific color. So then I can clearly tell what is what. So like if I have a yellow, it'll clearly show yellow. So then I don't have to do the thinking myself and which makes debugging like doing things a lot easier. Basically, if I want to like copy a color, I can clearly tell, oh, that's a yellow one. I got to go there. So then I just go with my Vim line GG, whatever that line number is, like let's say 59, 59 GG, yeah, copy that with Vim again. And I go down to, back to that line paste it p with vim and it's it makes it fast okay yeah that's it next one is called project manager okay so with adam uh there isn't a very clean way to like save projects so like what, what do you do when you have to like open a folder in Atom. What do you do? Usually either you drag and drop it to Atom's icon or you open Atom and then you click on file, open, and then find that folder wherever that is and then open, double click it and open, right? Uh, and if you're like me, you open up terminal uh, or hyper and then you go into uh, that folder and then you just do Atom dot, right? But there's a better way, okay? So with this package, what you can do is, let's say you have a project open. So then what you can do is save this project as a project project in Atom with the help of this project. So then when you open Atom next time, what you can do is open project by this shortcut and you can just do, oh, you select this project in the list of projects and just open it right there, okay? Without having to file, open, find it, and then open it that way, okay? Because it will save projects. And then once you have multiple projects, it makes it things a lot easier. So you might have a restaurant website project. You might have a por your main portfolio project. You might have a dog website project, right? So all those projects, you can just save it. And then when you, ha when you need to open it, you just, need you just open Atom and then go through that and open that specific project. Okay. All right. So the last one is called autocomplete paths. Again, this is my, one of my favorite packages. So what, what this allows you to do is autocomplete things for you. Okay. So for example, uh, I do a lot of React and Redux and also when I'm working with Node, right? So you're importing and exporting a lot of things and node you're requiring and you know, like module export. Uh, and when you're doing those things, what this allows you to do is this, when you're import, let's say in React, you have a lot of components, right? And you have a lot of containers and you have, in Redux, you have a lot of thunks. Things are everywhere. You're importing and exporting it everywhere. So when you're importing things, let's say you're doing import this thing from this another thing, okay? So when you're typing this out, autocomplete just autocompletes it for you. So when you type import this thing, it'll highlight it and it'll give you all the option that starts from this or whatever, right? And you just select and you just, enter that's it and then from and then you do the destination whatever it is and it helps you auto complete that that as well so it might not seem like a big deal but when you're when you have a lot of code and when you're importing from like 100 different files and you're exporting to 100 different files trust me it's going to help you so much debugging code uh, and, and it also gives you a peace of mind when you know that you're from or you type from and you, you do something and if it, does, if it doesn't show up, you know that you probably did something wrong in the other file or you didn't export it or something, right? Because this takes care of those things, okay? All right, guys, so that's it for my last package and that's it for this video. And if you guys found it helpful, hit that like button or smash it or whatever you want to and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, as always, leave it in the comment section below and I will respond even though I have not been responding lately because I'm so busy creating the content for jabjabjavascript.com. So I um, apologize for that to all my recent commentators. I will definitely get back to you. And again, if you're interested in that course, go to jabjabjavascript.com and join the wait list. All right. Other than that, take care and we'll talk soon.